Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Farrell. As an evangelist, I travel all over the world and meet thousands of people. Somewhere, I met somebody that knows you. They wanted me to share with you what has changed their life and what can change your life. It's found in the book of life. It's found in the Word of God. And there's a story about a man who is curious about his future, about eternal life. May I read to you John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3? There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Listen to the words of Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is not about your body, it's about your soul. You're not just a body with a soul. Technically, you're a soul with a body. Nicodemus, the Pharisee, which means separated one, was religious, self-righteous, great reputation, a ruler, highly respected by people, but something was missing in his life. You're looking today and listening because there's something missing in your life. Jesus cut right to the chase and told the most religious man in town, you must be born again. That's a confrontational statement, isn't it? Born again, what does that mean? Nicodemus said, as a old man, I go back inside my mother and come out a second time. Jesus lovingly gave him this instruction. You must be born of the water, physical birth, and the spirit, eternal birth, born from above. Now we have both had the water birth. You know, you received earthly life as a gift from God via your parents. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. It was a gift. Eternal life is the same, but it's not through your parents. It's through the Son, Jesus Christ. If I were sitting listening to this today, I'd have some questions. My first question would be, have to be born again? What's wrong with my first birth? My second question would be, well, what if I don't get born again? And I think an obvious third question is, if I want to be born again, what does it cost? Can I take just a moment to answer those three questions? One, what's wrong with my first birth? Well, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 that when you and I were born, we were born sinners. For it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, God's glory means the opinion of who He is, and truthfully, He's totally perfect and there is no sin in Him whatsoever. But you and I have missed that mark. Do you really believe you can live up to the standard of total perfection? What is sin? It means to miss the mark. Say, have you ever lied? Well, we know that's sin. Have you ever stolen? Have you ever wanted something that wasn't yours? We all have, and God calls that sin. Galatians 3 and verse 22 says, the scriptures conclude all under sin. Ecclesiastes 7, 20, there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Now, you know why you sin? Same reason I do because we were born sinners. We inherited that. Romans 5, 12 says, for as by one man sin entered in the world, and death by sin, so then death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. You inherited your physical traits, your stature, your hair color, your eye color. You inherited that from your parents. Our four parents, Adam and Eve, sinned against God and ate the fruit that God told them not to eat. Because of that, We've inherited that sinner's nature. We don't become sinners because we sin. We sin because we're born sinners. What's wrong with my first birth? Well, the answer is very simply sin. Second question, what if I don't get born again? God goes on and answers that question in Romans 6, 23, when he says the wages or payment or result of sin is death. Now, death in the Bible is not annihilation. No, death in the Bible is separation. When we die physically, the soul, the real you, is separated from your body. But when you die without God and you're not born again, then your soul is separated from God. Revelation 20 and verse 15 puts it this way. For whosoever is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You know, friend, you're going to live somewhere forever just like I am. God gives you the option to make the right choice and be born again and live with Him forever. But if you don't make that right choice, then not to choose is to choose, 
and it's to choose separation from God. Now, if God wants you to live with Him forever, I believe that's what you want. You don't want to spend an eternity away from God. There was a man in the Bible who was very wealthy, but he chose Rome. In Luke 16, 22, the Bible says the rich man also died and was buried. Here's a man who lived and he died, but the Bible says in hell he lifted up his eyes. Being in torments, he seeth Abraham afar off, Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abram, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Abraham said, son, remember. Dear friend, there is a hell. I wish there wasn't. I wish there wasn't Alzheimer's. I wish there wasn't Parkinson's and cancer. But the truth of the matter is, we have to deal with facts. We're going to die. We're going to live somewhere forever. There's only heaven. There's only hell. There is no other place. The Bible speaks of no purgatory. There's just two places. If God wants you in heaven, you want to be in heaven. But if you don't get born again, you can't go. Why? Revelation 21, 27 says, there's nothing that enters heaven that will defile it. If I die on my sin, I can't get in. It's a total impossibility because no sin will ever be in the presence of a holy, righteous God. If a man dies and goes to hell, he's not in soul sleep. He's alive. He's awake. He's aware. And my friend, you don't want that. You want Jesus. And so the third question is very simple. What does it cost to be born again? Well, may I tell you, it's too expensive for you to pay. Your work will not work. Your good is not good enough. So Jesus did for you what you can't do for yourself. The Bible puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he, God, hath made him, that's Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, so that we sinners might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ, God in a human body, lived a sinless life died on the cross, not for his sin, but for ours. We call it substitution. It's a sacrifice. It's what Jesus paid so that we don't have to pay the sin debt separated from him forever. He paid it with his blood. Hebrews 9, 12 says, neither by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood. He entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. My friend, if Jesus has paid for your sin, why would you want to pay for it? Well, how do you receive that gift? The Bible goes on and says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through, not the church, not sacraments, not Baptist, not works, but through Jesus Christ. When I come to Jesus, I come by repentance and faith. And Jesus said this in Mark 1, 15, repent ye and believe the gospel. Now he didn't say penance. That's what you pay. It's already paid. He said, repent. It means change your mind. You ever made a wrong turn going the wrong direction? You can continue on that road, but you're not going to get to the right destination. You can continue on your road of religion or self-righteousness or good works, but you'll never get to heaven. Luke 13, 3 and 5 says, except you repent, you'll perish. Change your mind. Change your mind about baby baptism. No baby in the Bible ever got baptized to go to heaven. Change your mind about confirmation. It won't save you. It will help you grow. Change your mind about communion, which is actually the Lord's Supper. Jesus didn't say you're receiving me. He said in 1 Corinthians 11, as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come this do in remembrance of me. Change your mind about your sin. You can't change your life, but you can change your mind and believe. Transfer all that you've been trusting into the one who's trustworthy. Come to Jesus for who he is. John 10, 30, Jesus said, I and my father are one. The only way Jesus can save you is to be who he says he is. And he's God and there is no other God. Come to him for what he did for you. Now, you may be thinking, I believe Jesus died and was buried and resurrected. Great. Did you know Satan believes that? You don't go to heaven because of historical facts. You go to heaven because of three realities. Christ died for your sin. When Jesus was on the cross, you were on his mind. He shed his blood for you. He was buried for you, and he was raised again for you. And he's the only founder of any world religion who's alive today. All the others occupy the tomb, but Jesus is alive and well. And only a living, loving, eternal, resurrected Christ can give you eternal life. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord 
not join, not give, not get baptized, not turn over a new leaf, but call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isn't that simple? What did God say? What's wrong with my first birth? Sin. What if I don't get born again? Separation. But what does it cost to be born again? Too much for us to pay. He made the sacrifice so you and I could receive the gift. I believe you want to receive that right now. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Now, the prayer will not save you. The word pray means to ask. But as you pray, you'll be asking Christ to enter your life and give you this new birth. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Nothing I've ever done or could do will take away my sin. Today, I repent of my sin. I put my faith only in you, Jesus Christ, as God. Thank you for giving me the gift of eternal life. Help me never to be ashamed of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you pray that? Don't trust the prayer, trust Jesus. He just gave you eternal life. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, these things, the things he wrote in this book, have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Right now, friend, and forever, you have the new birth, the gift of eternal life. Now share this with somebody. Don't keep it a secret. It's the greatest news anybody has ever received. Tell your loved ones, tell your friends, tell them at work. And let us know that you've received Christ. We'll do everything we can to help you take your next spiritual step. Welcome to the family of God.